Today's video, we have the latest NHL trade talk focusing on teams like the Maple Leafs, the Flames, the Vegas Golden Knights, the Seattle Kraken, and the Colorado Avalanche. We also have news on some fines laid out by NHL player safety, some news from the waiver wire, as well as some injuries, and another update on the Blackhawks scandal involving Kyle Beach and John Dome too. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and rumors to talk about here today. Uh, let's kick things off first with some news on the NHL injury front. Uh, we got some bad news on a couple of NHL players here today. Uh, looks like Coyotes forward Dimitri Yaskin is likely done for the season. Now, uh, he had an unfortunate situation last night with Predators defenseman Mark Borieski, where he took uh, basically Borieski's knee, uh, collided with Yaskin's knee, uh, it was an unfortunate situation, uh, and Yaskin is uh, injured pretty badly and appears to be done for the year. Now, Borietsky did have a hearing with NHL player safety, and NHL player safety released a statement saying that after discussing the situation and reviewing multiple camera angles, they've determined that there is no supplementary discipline for Borieski. In my opinion, if you watch the play, uh, when uh, you have Yaskin coming around and Borieski's brace for him, now he does lead with his knee, which I don't like, but at the same time, uh, when he's coming in like that for the hit, and Yaskin slams on the brakes, changes the angle, and then gets hit. It's a, it's a kind of an unfortunate set of circumstances, but I do think Yaskin's last-minute turn, trying to avoid the hit, is kind of what caused the collision to be as bad as it was. But at the same time, I don't think Borieski is completely off scot free here, although player safety determines that there's no supplementary discipline. But we did have NHL player safety uh, hand out a few other fines here today as well. Uh, Penguins forward Evan Rodriguez was fined $2,500 for a dangerous trip, essentially a slew foot which took place against the Ottawa Senators last night. And we also had a fine for the Minnesota Wild defenseman, Alex Goligoski, who was fined $5,000 for a high-sticking incident against Seattle Kraken forward Jordan Eberle. Now, another player who received bad news today is Sens uh, center iceman Shane Pinto. Of course, Pinto uh, signed out of college late last year, had a, a really solid finish to the season, playing in the team's last 10 to 12 games. I uh, started off the season looking really good, nailed down that number two center spot, uh, had a solid start, but then injured his shoulder. He missed nine games, but then yesterday against the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, a very innocent looking play. He was just taking a face off and just the way he moved, he dropped his stick and was in sudden pain, uh, went straight off the ice. And now they're saying there's a possibility at least that he might be done for this season. It's unfortunate news for Pinto, who has such a young, bright career, was poised to make such a, a big jump and have a big impact for the Senators this year. Combine that along with all the COVID issues the Senators have been dealing with. They had to play strict Batherson in COVID protocol today. They now have 10 players in this protocol. They only have nine healthy bodies left of their American Hockey League affiliate, and the NHL continues to let them play without shutting them down. I think it's absolutely ridiculous at this point. The team is beyond, uh, you know, shorthanded here. Um, it's insane that the NHL has not postponed any of their regular season games. Uh, I don't know what much more here that they can let this team go through before they do that. Uh, we saw outbreaks far less last year where games were um, postponed and suspended for a temporary period of time. Uh, hard to say what happens in that case, but for Pinto, obviously the shoulder re-injury, re-aggravation might need surgery. They haven't quite determined that as of yet, and that will likely be the determining factor if he in indeed is out for the year or not. So we'll see, but certainly want to wish him well wishes. The, uh, the youngsters had a rough go here early on. Uh, some news on the NHL waiver wire. The players on waivers from yesterday, uh, including Riley Shahan in Seattle and Leo Komarov with the Islanders have cleared. Of course, Komarov was on unconditional waivers for the purpose of contract termination. Uh, so he is no longer employed by the Islanders. He's officially terminated. Uh, he did put out a statement as well indicating that this was a really tough decision. Want to make it clear that nobody forced him to do this. This was strictly, uh, you know, his call, mutual decision here between he and the Islanders, and he's going to head back and play in the KHL, but it was not easy for him to leave his Islander teammates who he's played with for the past three seasons. So we'll see uh, where things go. I'm not sure if he'll ever make an NHL return or not, but certainly from the Islanders' standpoint, they could benefit greatly from the salary cap uh, space and relief they get from that 
contract termination. Also on waivers today, uh, nothing too substantial, but the Ottawa Senators do have defenseman Zach Leslie on waivers. Uh, they are so shorthanded. He was in Belleville. He's played nine games for the American Hockey League team, but he was on an AHL-only contract, and now he's been signed to a two-way deal. So to do that, he needs to clear through waivers to be eligible to be called up. So we'll see where things go for him. Um, that likely he will more than likely clear and be able to move on from there. We also had a signing as well today. The Capitals have extended uh, Nick Dowd, who's been with the team now in his fourth year. Uh, he was previously making just under a million dollars. He's appeared in nine games this year, scoring one goal, and he's been extended on a three-year contract valued at $1.3 million with an average annual value there. So a uh, decent contract for a bottom six forward uh, who the Capitals are certainly fond of and feel can be an important piece for their future for the next few years. Now, as I mentioned as well, we also got word today from the Chicago Blackhawks. The Blackhawks have now publicly committed to funding any kind of uh, therapy or the cost of therapy for Kyle Beach and what the other player from Michigan that we refer to as John Doe number two. Uh, that's irregardless of the outcome and any pending court cases that still continue to be ongoing. We know that the Hawks are basically in settlement discussions uh, with these players, uh, we know that they there's been word that they've tried to get cases dismissed out of court. Um, but regardless of the outcome of any of that stuff, uh, they at least have committed to helping them with financial recourse when it comes to getting therapy to, to deal with the uh, devastating events that took place in their lives previously, uh, which, you know, ultimately the Hawks are kind of responsible for it. I mean, they're directly responsible for what was not done to help Kyle Beach, and of course, what was not done to help Kyle Beach certainly helped what happened to the uh, young player in Michigan as well. So at least that's a, a positive step anyways. We'll see where things go in the court cases when we find out more information on that. Brian, of course, we're still waiting on the pending investigation for Bob Murray. I don't know if we'll hear any more on the situation for the former general manager in Anaheim or not, or where he's been resigned. We'll see what they decide to make public later on now onto the trade rumors for today there's certainly already some talk around the comments made from flames defenseman Yusuf valamaki of course valamaki uh, recently completed an interview with a european media outlet and uh, made it known that he's not overly happy with his playing time in houston so far this year with the calgary flames now the 23 year old defenseman unfortunately has had his fair share of injuries uh, but this year he's healthy and able and ready to play uh, he has appeared, I believe, in seven games, but he has been a healthy scratch on more than one occasion. And certainly, uh, you know, he's not pleased about it. I think a lot of what's happening here in Calgary is the emergence of Oliver Shillington. Uh, Shillington really has emerged this year and has been a phenomenal um, player for the Flames. And so they're not certainly taking him out of the lineup anytime soon. So really, he's kind of past Valimaki taking his spot basically and now Valimaki's not getting the playing time um, even though he is healthy in the past it's all been largely injury related but of course now it's a different reason so I certainly understand his frustration but it's uh, and even though he hasn't asked for it yet you have to wonder when they're making public comments like this if they will eventually make an official request for a trade or at least if he has uh, there's been nothing made public as of that for right now but still not a good look uh, for a player going public during the season, talking about the team that they're actually currently with. That's not something you see a lot of, especially publicly talking about their playing time like that, but he's not certainly not afraid to voice his opinions there. Uh, I would think that a lot of teams would have some, at least some decent interest in the young defenseman. Uh, he certainly has a lot of potential, and uh, even though he's you know yet to really realize a lot of that potential with the right opportunity, that could certainly be found so we'll see where this goes and if valimaki ends up staying in calgary and tries to you know improve that relationship or if they indeed decide to move on from the young disgruntled defenseman here in the near future now uh, on to other teams and some defensemen more reports about the avalanche and samuel gerard now mike stevens of the denver post again is talking about the young defenseman we had heard before speculation that when the avalanche were in the hunt for the jack eichel sweepstakes the gerard was the main top roster player involved in the package that they were offering to try to require the top center iceman from the buffalo sabers of course that deal never materialized and eichel ended up being traded to the vegas golden knights but stating back to last year's exit at the hands of the vegas golden knights there's been a lot of talk that the avalanche might try to make some changes to their blue line and that gerard might be the ideal trade chip 
uh, and to kind of get a different group of D-man and dynamic back there. And this would also help them upgrade their forwards. Uh, clearly, they could use uh, an upgrade in the, the forward group. And Gerard are likely net them a pretty good haul of return. I mean, they could probably get a combination of roster player and maybe even some futures in there as well, uh, considering he's a young offensive dynamic defenseman, great skater, under contract for an extended time at a pretty valuable rate. Uh, you know, good age, all that. There's lots to like about Gerard. He's got lots of upside. So, you know, when you're looking for value, you have to give value. And this could be an opportunity for the Avalanche to either make a real solid hockey trade and bring in a real solid winger, uh, or maybe they get a combination of a couple of assets to improve the, the team as a whole. It's hard to say, but he seems to have gone from a player that was mentioned as, you know, kind of being dangled and a big deal to acquire Eichel to now the reports indicate that they are actively shopping him, looking for other upgrades now that the Eichel situation is certainly not going to happen for them since that ship has sailed. Now, we also have seen word again from Arthur Staple of The Athletic referring to a potential trade between the Islanders and the Toronto Maple Leafs, which could involve Travis Dermott and possibly Michael Del Cole going back the other way. Now, again, I say that the Islanders need defense. We talked about this yesterday. I referenced the fact that Dermott was a name that's been brought up in a couple of different outlets, pre predominantly in the Athletic by Arthur Staple. Uh, and I'm not really convinced that he's the right guy for the Islanders. But obviously, uh, he would be a player that Lou would be somewhat familiar with from his time in Toronto. Michael Del Cole, also from Toronto, might have interest to be a depth forward for the Leafs if they trade Dermott. They're not necessarily going to need something back that goes immediately on the roster. And Dal Cole is a player who could be, you know, a bottom six or he could be an AHL call-up. Like, there's different options there. It might be what the Leafs might be interested in. So uh, I can understand the concept from Staple on this, uh, you know, potential scenario that he's discussing here. But again, I'm not convinced that Travis Dermott is the right guy for the New York Islanders. I would suspect, though, that the Islanders... And Lou Lamarillo should be making a trade in the very near future. I would not be waiting too long with that very tight, very competitive Metropolitan Division. And the fact that they clearly have a need back there for another blue liner, preferably somebody who can play the left side. Um, I, you know, I just not, I don't think he's the guy, but we'll see who else they target. I mentioned before that Samuel Gerrard is a, a potential target as well. Maybe Hampus Lindholm in Anaheim if he's available. Um, but I don't know that Dermot is who they should be targeting there. Uh, but another guy who could be a target for them uh, would be Kraken Captain Mark Giordano. Now, there's the other words as well and reports um, from different reporters, including uh, some New York media, in indicating that they feel that there's a good chance that the Kraken might trade their captain, given the fact that he's on an expiring contract and they have not had a good start to their season, not looking really like a good chance at all at NHL playoffs in their first year. So do they want to keep, you know, the 36, 37-year-old defenseman around and talk about a contract extension, remain captain? Or do they want to get some assets back for the future? I mean, the fact that they've made him captain so quickly into their franchise's existence might tell us that maybe they don't want to trade him. I know it was a big deal for him to change teams after being a member of the Calgary Flames for so many years and such a long stretch of his NHL career. He may not be fond of the idea either, but there have been links to Giordano and the New York Rangers in the past. The Rangers do have several players uh, that could be moved due to salary cap purposes as well, like either offset playing, uh, all, kind of offsetting the blue line acquisition or whatnot. I mean, there was even mentioned maybe a Ryan Strom, for example, who's been uh, in and out of the rumor mill himself. Uh, we do know that the Rangers have been rumored to be wanting to add another defenseman to play on the third pair. And maybe he could be that guy, but he'd be an expensive player to do that. Uh, we might have to do some cap gymnastics for the Rangers to make that work. But the Kraken have lots of flexibility, so they could certainly work things around. So we'll see where that goes. I don't know if Giordano will finish the year in Vegas or not. But it's a possibility that he, at the very least, they're likely going to be getting some calls to see if they'll move him ahead of the deadline in the playoffs. Now, talking about Vegas as well, they're another team that's going to have a major cap issue uh, in a few months' time. Assuming that Jack Eichel recovers from his surgery, Max Pacioretty comes back, they're going to be well over the cap and have to move out some players. And the main ones that have been mentioned in the rumor mill as likely being tradable to offset their salary cap hit would be forward Riley Smith or defenseman Braden McNabb. Uh, they could do that with a combination of other 
potential moves to, to demote a few players to the minors to create the necessary space for those veterans to come back and be activated off injured reserve. So we'll see where it goes, but uh, they're not going to be in any rush here because they're going to want to wait until these players are really close to being activated. They're not going to want to trade them now and be depleted for a few months' time. Not really clear at this point how long Pacioretty is going to be out, but I do expect that with the acquisition of Jack Eichel and very little going out in the way of actual salary cap off the books immediately here that we're going to see a trade or two involving Vegas as he potentially gets closer to his return and make, to make his Vegas debut in the expiring contracts of players that they very well might not bring back anyway would be your most likely places to start. So we'll see again, see where this goes, but Braden McNabb and Riley Smith are certainly players to watch here as the season goes along. As we get word of patch ready and Riley Smith's imminent return, those players very well could find themselves heading out into a new uniform. So let me know your thoughts on everything discussed here today down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.